Hi, I'm Kelly. And this is Ricardo. We're Bok Bok BK. Today we're going to be answering frequently asked questions sent to us by our friends that are non-chicken people. I've had chickens for my entire life. I grew up with them, so I have about 25 plus years experience raising chickens. And I've had chickens for only about five months since the whole COVID-19 quarantine started. So some of these questions I had myself as well. So we're going to get started. First question is, do you plan on eating your chickens? No, these chickens are our pets and they're for egg laying purposes. We'll, we'll eat their eggs, but not, we're not going to be butchering any chickens. How often do your chickens lay eggs? Do you want to answer this one? Well, it depends on the breed. Uh, like our Rhode Island Red seems to be laying pretty much every day, like seven days a week. She might miss a day or two, but she's pretty good at laying eggs. Some of our other ones, they lay every other day. Like our Orpingtons will get an egg every other day, sometimes daily. Really we have though. a black sex link and a red sex link chicken, uh, or black star, red star, and they lay pretty much every day. Question here is, do your chickens get upset when you take their eggs? We disagree on this. I don't think they care. My entire life I've gathered eggs and I've never seen a chicken bat an eye. It's not that I disagree, but <laughs> I, sometimes I feel like when I go get their egg, after they've already laid and stepped away from it, I kind of hide it. Cause I almost feel like they're <laughs> gonna go like, no, wait, like that's my egg, don't take it. But I don't know, maybe they don't care. I just feel I, like- I don't think they care. <laughs> I just kind of try and hide it. Is an egg a chicken having a period or is it a chick being born? Short answer, yes, it is a chicken period. Just like uh, once a month a woman releases an egg, every day a chicken releases an egg. So it can become a baby, but that's that's part of another question. And here it goes. Are fertilized eggs any better for you? No, it does not matter if the egg is fertilized. What matters if the egg is better for you is what the chicken is fed, the chicken's diet. If the chicken's being fed superfoods, then the chicken's egg will be better for you. It doesn't matter if it's fertilized. So you mean to tell me that if I eat a <laughs> fertilized egg, I'm not gonna get all stronger than I already am? You need, you it's need not gonna some, do anything? You think you need some <laughs> cock in you? It's not extra protein. <laughs> okay, next question here is, what makes a chicken happy? Well, um, definitely bringing snacks to them if, <laughs> if that is a multi-tiered question the amount of treats they get the amount of time they get to roam on land they like to be out in nature to be able to scratch on the ground they don't want to be in a cage where they have a hardware cloth or or a cage bottom they need to be on the earth they like fresh greens they like head scratches and lots of love dust bathing and a couple of them are doing it right now i just heard them Back here. They like to scratch around bathing. in the dirt, and they like to scratch around in the dirt, and they like to look for bugs. Hey, here's a question that we didn't get asked, but now that we're talking about dust bathing, why do chickens dust bathe? To keep mites and lice and other parasites off of them, is what I've always thought. But and it like probably just feels good. It probably cools them off too when it's really hot. When it is really hot in the summer, I do like to spray down all the dirt and get it really wet because I think it makes the dirt nice and cool and they like to dust bathe in that cool dirt. Mm -hmm. And people are wondering, how can we ensure we are eating happy chicken eggs? Make sure that if you are buying your eggs from the store that you're only buying it from free range, cage free, humanely raised chickens it's really important to at least like get eggs from someone local that you know or if you are buying them from the store make sure that you are not getting them from some factory farm and then on the egg card it'll even say vegetarian raised chickens when chickens are not vegetarians they're omnivores and to be healthy they need to eat bugs they eat bugs and worms and whatever they can forage out in the grass they should never be vegetarian fed although they do eat veggies they love they veggies like but ours. they are omnivores spinach kale and lettuce mango watermelon cantaloupe etc fruits and veggies can you feed your chicken superfoods and end up in their eggs yes our chickens are fed organic chicken feed which has seeds and grains and they get all of our table scraps which is organic veggies food they get fresh cantaloupe watermelon blueberries grapes we give them spinach cabbage lettuce they, they get everything we get so we're careful with what we feed them because ultimately we do eat their eggs and we don't want to end up eating some stuff with antibiotics and gmos and things like that next question here is what 
are the different types of chickens? I think they meant like breeds, but is there any difference or what are the different breeds? There are so many different kinds of chickens, just like there is dogs. And they each lay different colored eggs. They all, all chicken eggs, depending on the color and everything, do not have different nutritional value. Different nutritional value in eggs is based off what the chicken eats, but all chickens of different breeds lay different color eggs. Yeah, I think you just answered my next question yeah. here because it says, are their eggs different colors? So yeah, some of them lay white, some light brown, some really dark brown, some blue, some, some different some sizes green. too, littler, smaller, S Some larger. are olive color, uh, yeah. Dark uh, chocolate pink brown. Pink even, so yeah, it depends on the breed, but they will always lay the same color. So it's not like they're gonna lay a green egg one day and then a white one the next day and then a blue one the other day. So it's depending on that chicken, they'll always lay either their blue egg or the brown egg or the white ones. And chickens that have the blue egg gene, their egg is blue all the way throughout, whereas a brown egg, the shell is white inside. Do different colored eggs taste differently? I think I already answered that actually. No, they don't. <laughs> they all taste the same. <laughs> Do chickens need a rooster to lay eggs? I'll answer that because I was asked several times <laughs> and the answer is no, they don't. Um, if you want to raise and breed chickens, then yes, you need a rooster so they can mate and then have a fertile egg, which then the chicken will lay on and eventually that egg will hatch. But if there is no rooster in your house and you don't have a hen house only, if you have a yard with only chickens, only hens, they're gonna all lay their eggs, but they will never be fertile. So no, you don't need a rooster for your chickens to lay eggs. You only need a rooster if you want to raise baby chicks. But even without a boyfriend, a girl still gets her cycle every month. <laughs> Do roosters sit on the eggs? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rooster's job is to protect their flock from predators. Yeah, they, 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 they warn their flock and they go, Arr! Yeah, they, and then they'll run and hide. They also alert them if they have a treat. They're pretty selfless in that. If they find a big old worm or some little grass or seeds on the ground, they will alert the girls to come over and snack and they won't have a bite. And they uh, fertilize the eggs. <laughs> okay. What is the pecking order? You guys might have heard that term before, pecking order. It's a real thing. What is the pecking order? Chickens are very complex social creatures and they have a pecking order to establish who is the dominant top dog of the group and their leader. So chickens one by one down the line go in order of who's in charge. It'll just be a quick peck like this just to let them know who's in charge or to wait their turn to eat. It seems like the adult hens want to peck them and until they're done eating then the other younger chickens can come and eat as well. They have to let the other girls know who's in charge because the more established older hens in the pecking order will have their chance at the food to eat. Whereas once they are done, then the babies and the younger ones and the lower ones in the pecking order will have their chance. Or also how they roost when they go to sleep at night. They always want to be the highest one yeah. there. So the there's multiple roost. bars gets the that's where the top hen goes it's like the king or queen so we have all of our roost bars even, even. <laughs> yeah so that way they don't fight over who gets what spot they're all on the same plane and i think this question is probably for those people that are considering getting chickens and they just kind of want to be informed of what they will need to feed their chickens so the question reads what do chickens eat chickens eat everything they're little garbage disposals but you have to buy them a good quality when they're teenage stage, grower food, and then when they're at laying stage, a layer food. You buy the bag food at um, your local feed store, livestock store. Yeah, and that's just to ensure that they're getting the proper nutrients, vitamins, calcium, and all that. Um, you did say they eat everything, and that is true, but there are certain foods that you should avoid giving your chickens. I know uh, things I learned from her were like, you're not supposed to feed them onions, or like avocado pits are really bad for them. Yeah, onions, unless you want your eggs to taste like onions. Avocado is pretty much poisonous to almost every animal except humans, so no avocado pits. Oh, the deadly nightshade family. You can feed your chickens tomatoes and peppers, but do not feed them the leaves. Eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, ginseng weed, there's a few plants that that you grow or in the area that are in the deadly nightshade family do not feed the leaves they are poisonous when in doubt just go ahead and do a quick google search for example like can you feed chicken strawberries and you'll get your answer there pretty much um i just oh like to citrus be safe. no citrus 
No lemon and orange. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if if you have food scraps that you want to feed your chickens, just maybe do a quick little Google search and then find out whether you should or shouldn't give that to your chickens. Next question here is, what are your chickens' favorite snack? <laughs> I think they like a lot of things. I found their absolute favorite, besides mealworms, like dried mealworms, yeah. is uh, blueberries. If they see me coming and if I throw a blueberry on the ground, the entire flock just runs and gets it. I throw them another one and they all just immediately run after that blueberry. And they all end up getting some because I make sure that everyone gets them. But I'm going to say number one, favorite snacks for our chickens would be blueberries. What do I you would think? also say um, anything in your hand. <laughs> they they <laughs> want it if it's in your hand. Sometimes I'll be walking over to them to give them some like fresh lettuce or spinach or any leaves from my garden, my kale plants. They go and crazy. They, they jump and grab it out of my hand before I even notice, look down to give it to them. But that's how you win their love, yeah. through food. <laughs> and if, if you have skittish chickens that run away from you, bring food and <laughs> you'll be their best friend. Sometimes they'll fly up on my shoulder wanting to get the food because I haven't brought it down to them fast Oh, they'll bite it off of my hand. They jump yeah. and <laughs> eat it off my hand. And how long do chickens typically live? Well, about Assuming that you're not killing them. For food, I would which say we about the but. same age as like a dog. They can live up to 15 years. I, I've heard like 10 to 15 years. The proper care. Um, chickens don't lay their entire lives. They go through like a a menopause as well, so they don't lay eggs for that entire time. So. A menopause. Yeah. So if you keep them as pets, they can live a long time if you feed them well and treat them right. Um, some people will butcher them and use them as meat once they have stopped making eggs. We won't be doing that though, because yeah. they're just our pets. Even if they're not laying a single like which some of them in the back don't we have a bunch lay. of free loaders but they're teenagers they're, they're still babies. yeah but yeah. even if they stop laying you know we're gonna keep them until they die of natural causes i don't think we're gonna ever just kill them for me how can you tell if your chickens are happy upset or sick well just like any pet you can tell their normal behavior and how they're supposed to act and i've noticed when chickens not feeling well they won't be flying and jumping as much as they used to. They might be closing their eyes a lot. Their tail will be down, or yeah, their tail will be, be drooping down. They will have their wings like low. They just look tired and, and groggy. Sometimes if they have a cold, they could have bubbly eyes and a uh, nasal discharge and maybe even sneeze. But yeah, you can tell when they're sick because they're just kind of not acting themselves. They're aloof, they're lethargic. Um, sometimes they'll like stay up on the roost bar in the morning when you let them all out. They'll just stay behind, they kind of keep their distance. But when when they are sick, we tend to quarantine them, separate them from the rest of our flock so that they don't all catch the same bug that they have. Yeah, when the chicken's <laughs> sick, you want to just isolate that chicken from the rest of your flock so that they don't all end up getting sick too. Yeah, well, there, that's a whole nother larger video we could go into, but uh, that's not really. These questions aren't really in any particular order, so we're gonna go from what do you do when you have a sick chicken to what determines egg size and shell thickness of a chicken? Breed, breed of chicken and shell thickness could be diet. They need a lot of calcium in their diet to make healthy, strong eggshells. If your hen is lacking calcium in her diet, they could have brittle, weak eggshells that could break or they could, when they're leaving the nesting box, they accidentally step on it, they can crack. So you need to make sure that you have a supplement of oyster shell or even you can recycle your eggs from when you're eating. You could, the leftover shells from, from your breakfast and everything, you can store those, clean those, bake them, grind them up and feed them right back to your hens. Or you can buy oyster shell at your local pet store to give to your hens. For strong eggs, for supplement. Th thick eggshells. Yeah. Why do some eggs have two yolks? Which I didn't know that was a thing until- a Double yolker, the most exciting thing to find in the nesting box. Large, long egg, and you, you can tell right away when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, I got a double yolker. It's a much bigger egg. Yeah, it's exciting. The what? question is though, why do some yeah. have two yolks? So when the hen releases the yolk from her oviduct, it goes down the tube first as the yolk, and then the white attaches to it, and then later comes the shell, and then she lays it. Well, she just releases two yolks. It ends up in the same white in the same shell. Okay. And something I didn't know, but I looked up, the Guinness Book World Records for the most yolks in an egg is nine. It's crazy. Crazy. I've what? never I've never seen more than two. There you go. Yeah, never. <laughs> is it okay to eat an egg that has a little blood drop in it? 
Yes, I have never cared or paid attention to that. I know some people are squeamish about their food, but it's just a ruptured blood vessel from when the hen was making the egg inside her, down her um, reproductive tract. And I mean, a little blood never hurt anyone. It's like if you're eating a steak that has blood in it, you're gonna cook it anyway. Yeah, the little blood dot is just if that when the hen was, when the egg was traveling down the hen's reproductive tract, a blood vessel ruptured and then end up in the egg. Okay. Didn't hurt. Next question is, how do you raise baby chicks and what do you feed them? I think my friend was curious to buy a little baby chicks from seeing some of our post and um, she was just curious. We on, have a video about that. You can see it right here. Just click on the link there. Yeah. We'll also link it in the description below yeah. on how we set up our baby chicks and their brooder and what we feed them and all that. Do your chickens ever escape? And if so, how do you catch them back? <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, one escape artist this morning jumped over the fence and was in the kale bed. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, our little fence is only about a four foot fence. So, yeah, they jump up there all the time and sometimes they make it over all Just the way to into our them garden. From the garden, but. Uh, a couple of our hens, the super friendly ones, like to jump up on the top just to get love and affection from us, but... But yeah, when, when they get out, we just go and, you know, we try and go pick them up. Our hens are pretty hand tamed, so they don't run around too much. And if they do, we just kind of lure them and herd them back into their, their area here. We open up the fence and they just walked right back in. Yeah, because sometimes when they see us, they literally just fly up to the fence. Or yeah. you just lure them in with food. You throw some scratch and some corn on the ground and they'll just run right up to it. How many chickens do you guys have? And how do you remember all their names? Well, we did our count this morning. We had to count. <laughs> we weren't sure because we just got new baby chicks and uh, I don't know. We've been adding some new ones to our flock. So we ended up with... 42, right? 40, 42 birds. birds. So One's we, a duck. <laughs> and a rooster. Well, we so have the, a few roosters, so actually. Well, Cockerels. Yeah, some of them we bought them as pullets, but I now think they're, they're turning pullets. into roosters. So. <laughs> so we have 42 birds, 41 are chickens. How do you remember all their names? Well, they all look... You just look, do. They, they all yeah. look really different from, from each other. And they have their own personality, and we name them based off of how they look and their personality, so... And even though it's yeah. 42 of them, it's like they're family members to us, so... And we all pick names we like to call them, like our little white owl-looking chicken is Hedwig, so... We have we a Griffin, and a Morticia, and a Dorothy, and a Rhonda. A Lucy, and an Ethel. <laughs> so they're all kind of like family members, where yeah. even though I have a lot of family, it's not like, like I ever forget my aunt's name. So... Yeah, you got a lot more family. As, <laughs> as how do we remember their names? Yeah, we just, we love them, and they all have their personality. Yeah, we like to collect different breeds. I think that's why we have so many chickens. I think it was mostly, because like, like I didn't Pokemon, want them to Like you gotta them. catch them all. Like. <laughs> <laughs> do all of your chickens get along? Short answer, no, but in time, sometimes they do. Is again, they have to establish their pecking order, and when they're first introduced, they don't always all get along, but I'd like to say right now, yes. Yeah, they and, all get and along. even yeah. when they don't, they're, they're not super vicious. They just kind of peck each other, chase each other, but they're not drawing blood if or anything If you do like have a vicious or aggressive issue that isn't resolving itself, like I've had it before where it was just months, and, and it was just non-stop just just no peace we rehome aggressive animals do your chickens get along with your duck because we have one duck and the rest of them are chickens the duck is the boss duck's in charge yeah so they, they get they along so <laughs> there's peace there but you know the duck will be walking by and if she they wants to peck someone <laughs> she'll peck at one of them and they just run if away so it's eating, not a big deal mm -mm, they're not gonna eat right there <laughs> daisy is in charge her name's daisy <laughs> Are your chickens jealous of your duck's pool? We have a little kitty pool for our duck that she goes in there, flops around, and swims. So, uh. Chickens do not like to swim, so no, but they do drink water from it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think they're jealous of the swimming pool because they're not gonna wanna swim anyway. Yeah, when it's raining and there's a crazy storm going on, our duck is out there flapping like, this is my element. Like, she just loves it. She loves it. the rain, the bad weather, the wind, everything nasty. The duck's out there just loving it. The chickens, on the other hand, if there's one raindrop out there in the in the coop hiding. and They don't like getting wet. They, they don't like the snow either. They don't like any sort of weather, no. <laughs> what is the difference between fertilized eggs and not fertilized eggs? I mean, that, that blood dot, that's a kind of a chicken myth right there. That blood dot is not an indicator of a fertilized egg. Again, that is just a ruptured blood vessel when the hen was 
having the egg go down her reproductive track. But you can tell, okay, so we're gonna go into egg anatomy right here. On the yolk, there's a little white dot, a little, little white circle on the yolk called the germinal disc. And that is what becomes the baby chick. The yolk is actually the food sack that feeds the baby for the entire time. And then after the baby is born or hatched, the chick doesn't even need to eat or drink water for up to three days. And that's how they ship baby chicks to you because they're fed from the yolk. It is their food reservoir for the time that they're in the egg and for right after they're hatching because when the mother hen is hatching her eggs, not all of the eggs will hatch at the same time. So the baby chicks are able to rely on that yolk food preserve while they're waiting for their brothers and sisters to hatch because the mom's not just gonna take some of her chicks out to go for it. She's gonna wait till all of her baby chicks have hatched and then she'll take them out for their first adventure to drink water and forage. And then you can think of the egg white as like the the floating like membrane sac that even like a regular baby is born in. That's just a membrane to protect the baby inside the egg. How can you tell if an egg has been fertilized? If you're incubating eggs or if you have eggs under a broody hen, you can start, you can do your own ultrasound by candling the egg. You just shine a light through the egg and you can see the embryo develop. You'll see a spider web of veins and then you'll start to see a little baby inside there. It almost looks like a human actually, like a little alien, but that's how you can tell if your egg is developing. If you're trying to incubate eggs, make sure that you don't incubate a non-fertile egg and it just starts to rot. You want to make sure that all the eggs are viable. Why do you have chickens? My nephew asked me that question a few weeks ago and the short answer is because they bring me a lot of joy. Uh, I love Aww. having them around and it's like having dogs. He's a good chicken daddy. They make us laugh constantly and they're just very silly animals and they all have their own personalities and they're very smart. There's Cleo up here right now. And they also provide us with eggs that we like to eat for breakfast in the mornings. Why do I have chickens? Why chickens? Gosh, I don't remember my life before chickens. I've always had them and I've always been really close to them. I just, I'm a crazy bird lady anyway. I've always just loved chickens and they were my favorite animal on the farm. I tended to them. I used to breed them, raise them. I used to show them in 4-H. You're not allowed to show large livestock until you're nine years old in 4-H. So, man, from like five to nine, it was just me and the chickens. I was half my life just raising chickens and showing chickens. I, I just love chickens. I don't know. <laughs> just love them. <laughs> the chickens like the sun and well, Sometimes they like to go and dust bathe in the sun and put their feathers up. We call it the sonic. They raise like all their <laughs> like neck feathers in the air and they literally just like flop on the floor on their side and just like, ah, and they, they, they sunbathe. But they don't necessarily like the sun. So if you do, if you are gonna have chickens. We have shade cloth. Make sure you provide them with areas where there will be shade under trees or inside of a chicken run like we have here. We have canopies outside our run. So they're always able to find some sort of shade and stay cool in the hot temperatures in the summer. But do you have sunny options for if they choose to sunbathe? The chickens come out of their chicken coop on their own. My friends were asking me that because they saw our chicken coop and they were just going, what the heck, do you have to carry them out every morning? Well, no, actually the chickens do come out there on their own. We just do open the chicken coop door and then everyone wants to be the first one out. Yeah, the early bird gets the worm. <laughs> Same person asked me, do they go to the bathroom overnight in their chicken coop or do you have a designated area for them? And yes, they go to the bathroom a lot and their chicken coop. Probably what they ate all day long, they end up pooping it out overnight. We have industrial hemp or you can use pine shavings. shavings. There's many different bedding options, but we have bedding under the roost bars that they poop in all night. So we just have to clean it out every now and then. And this actually says here, how often do you have to clean the chicken coop. That is a very variable answer. That depends on what kind of coop you have, what kind of bedding. So many, there's there's just so many answers. To right that. now we're doing a deep litter system, but before that we, we would try to do it maybe once a week or every other week. We Yeah, when well, we just had like out. a thin layer of pine shavings, like once a week, we would clean it out. Now we're doing the deep litter method. So you just keep adding more and more industrial hemp bedding and the bedding and the poop, which is the nitrogen and your carbon will actually start to compost and everything. And then another method that we apply to our chicken coop in the back is we have sand 
and just you don't really have to do do anything with that the sand it naturally just becomes the earth again and i mean that one we barely have to clean out <laughs> but yeah you want to make sure you have a clean coop so that it doesn't smell really bad and it could also be harmful to the chickens that are smelling the ammonia and all that make sure you have lots of ventilation in it as well and this coop we built it with uh, a lot of ventilation so that it it would prevent those problems. Especially live in a really hot weather area. Does the rooster crowing wake you up in the morning? I mean, that depends on, on everybody, but I like the sound of a rooster crowing and I'm kind of like ear blind to it. <laughs> and then our rooster happens to be, I don't know, about hundred, a couple hundred feet away. So we, we don't really hear it in the morning. We actually wake up before it starts crowing and then we go and let it out. And then different breeds of roosters have different levels of noise. Smaller Bantam breeds have a little tiny crow. Oh, and then larger heavy breed roosters have a big, large crow. Another one of my friends asked, how can you tell if your, one of your eggs has gone bad? Well, the smell. <laughs> But that, that shouldn't really happen because eggs really do not, it takes a long time for an egg to expire. When the chicken lays an egg, there's a natural coating that is on the egg called the bloom, and that protects the egg from any bad bacteria like salmonella or anything coming in. So your chickens can stay on your counter and do not need to be refrigerated and can last a long time. The eggs in the store have been washed, so if you wash your eggs, they have to be refrigerated because they are stripped of the protective bloom, and that makes them susceptible to going bad in the bacteria getting in there. So a way to test your eggs if they are gonna go bad is that you do the water test. You get a bowl of water and you put your eggs in there. If they sink to the bottom, they're good. If they float, that's a bad egg. Don't eat it. How can you tell when an egg is ready to be eaten? And again, it's, these are questions from non-chicken people. And the answer is pretty much you can eat them immediately after it's been hatched. If there's an egg, you can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> <If they're>, yeah. <laughs> the fresher the egg, the better. It's just a little warm to the touch, but it's not any different. You can go ahead and crack it into a pan or whisk it away, I like whatever to keep you want to do. my eggs on the right countertop away. because room temperature eggs cook better refrigerated like just like your meat refrigerated items don't cook as well you want to bring things to room temperature before you cook them question is how long does it take for a chick to hatch i believe it's 20 it's either 21 to 28 days or maybe it's 21 days it's about 21 days yeah after the the chicken's gone broody and it's laying on the egg yeah, they incubate the egg for about 21 days and either your incubator in your home or you have a hen that does it, which we call broody. What do you, what do you guys call it in, in Spanish? Culeca. Yeah. If your chicken goes culeca, that means she's broody and that means that she's laying over the eggs to keep them warm and so that the egg can develop into a, a chick. Do you need a mama hen to raise chicks? Well, either you need a mama hen or you're the mama hen. <laughs> yeah. And not just every broody hen is a good mother either. So she may be, you have to monitor them still because she may be good at hatching the eggs, but it doesn't mean she's good at raising them. And even if you let the mom raise the, the chicks, you need to make sure that she's safe because predators will just, or even other hens in the flock will kill those babies. So whenever I let one of our hens raise the baby chicks, we have her in a separate pen where we know the babies are safe. We have very, very small fencing so the chicks cannot fit through there and they're perfectly safe and she can raise them in peace. How do chickens sleep? <laughs> I didn't know this either before I started getting into chickens but I thought they would just kind of lay down like a dog would in their coop. No there's actually roost bars in the coop and they like to jump up there grab onto the bar and they sleep up high so naturally they try to get away from predators land animals that might swoop them up at night. So. Chickens roost at night and he'll always say like, oh, did the chickens go to bed yet? I'm like, you mean, did the chickens go to roost? I mean, to sleep. <laughs> they don't have a bed. <laughs> That's their bed. <laughs> they have roost bars. How do you get them to go to bed at night and put them away? Well, chickens put themselves to bed because it's a natural instinct for them to get up high to hide from predators when they were wild 
um, jungle fowl, they would perch up in trees to get away so they wouldn't get eaten at night. So when it, the sun starts getting to about sundown, they know to be safe and get somewhere high. So they put themselves to bed. They slowly mm -hmm. start making their way back up here and up the ramp. They walk up the ramp. They go inside and then they find their favorite spot up on a roost. We have three roost bars with plenty of space. So then they each they jump up there. They fly up there. And, and they all have their favorite spots where they pretty much mm -hmm. will roost every time. Designated area. And then we just come at night, close up the gate, and that's it. We might actually be investing into an automatic door, so we won't even have to do that. We'll set on a timer for sundown, and it'll close, and it'll open again at sun uh, sunrise. Do chickens take naps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like to snooze off on the daily. They'll be dust bathing, and you know, you, before you know it, one of them's closing their eyes, looking comfortable and well, they get so cozy. cute and comfy, and they close their little eyes, and they lay on their side. But most of the day, they're out scavenging for bugs and food and anything that they can possibly eat. What is the cutest thing a chicken has done? Exist. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so cute. Yeah, when they're napping and they close their little Yeah, eyes. that's really cute. Yeah. Uh, I guess the cutest thing one of our chickens has done is that we have a chicken swing for them and they jump up there on their own and all of a sudden we go, oh, oh my gosh, look, they're on the they swing. They like to swing. I like when they like to jump up and eat our sunflower leaves as well. They jump pretty high to grab the little leaves. And it's so Everything cute. they do is cute, even when they're running, walking, oh, when making the their noises, run. you name it. Or even when they do the egg song. We got asked this question by six different people and it is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, why don't you guys let us know what you think in the comments below. What came first, the chicken or the egg? We all have our beliefs and we don't know exactly who's right. I think it was the egg. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. In actuality, the egg predates the chicken. There were eggs before chickens were created. But then people will say, well then, who laid, who laid the egg? So. It's like standing I don't know. in between two We're not ears. profits, so, <laughs> you know, do your research or give us your theories in the comments below. Those were frequently asked questions by friends of ours, but now here's some facts that you may not have known. Broody chickens. Broody is when a chicken goes into the state where she wants to hatch eggs. It actually kind of takes her over her. She raises her body temperature. She goes into, she becomes obsessed. She wants to just sit on the eggs, and when they go into that state, they stop laying. So some people like to break their hands of being broody because they're not getting eggs at that time. And it can be unhealthy if they're not eating or drinking water, if they become too obsessed with hatching eggs. And sometimes there's no eggs to hatch, they're just broody on nothing. <laughs> egg laying song. So when a chicken has laid their egg, they will typically come out of the coop. They'll start singing a very specific song that sounds a little bit like this. Sometimes they do that song when they see something or just when they're, they're excited about something or worried about something. But most of the time if we hear that and we're inside, we, we go, oh, somebody laid an egg. We come out and see Dorothy or Rhonda singing or whoever it might have been. See we go in our coop <laughs> and then we have a fresh new egg that they laid yep. waiting in their nesting box. Here's something that you may not have known about chickens. Chickens actually see more colors than you and I could see or even comprehend exists. And they see ultraviolet, so they can see like bugs glowing on the ground and it helps them hunt for different bugs and stuff. And chickens have one eye that is nearsighted and one eye that is farsighted. One eye is for looking down and seeing food and one eye is for tilting up and seeing if there's predators in the sky, aerial predators, so. One eye's for far, one eye's for near. And they see more colors than me and you can. It's I always like cool. to carry them on the same side so they're able to see my face and <laughs> recognize that I'm their dad. Yeah, they'll always tilt your head, their head up and look up at you when it's their far eye. <laughs> oh yeah, chickens do not have teeth to chew their food like me and you, so they actually have a crop. So when they eat, they store their food in their crop before it becomes digested and stuff. And they need to either eat sand or rocks or you need to supplement on the side grit and they store the grit and the sand in their crop to break down their food. And then one of our last chicken facts here that we actually found out while doing one of those Google searches when we wanted to give our leftover jalapeno peppers that we grow in our garden to our chickens is that chickens actually cannot detect heat 
they so yes you can feed your chickens peppers and no they can't taste how spicy they are so they'll actually just eat it like if it was just any old veg vegetable chickens do not have the gland or the receptor in their taste buds to taste spicy so another way to keep the squirrels out of your chicken feed is to pour some cayenne pepper in it because <laughs> then the squirrels will just run away and yeah. the chickens will just eat it like just like sugar they don't even know it's there well not just like sugar but just like anyway. nothing <laughs> if you enjoyed these frequently asked questions that were sent to us today and random chicken facts go ahead and hit that like button don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to keep up with our baby chicks and want more chicken content coming to you we'll see you guys in the next one thank you guys for watching